Hi there, and thank you for downloading these free Halloween math talks. My hope for you is that this video is going to basically give you a broad overview of how to implement a number talk routine in your classroom. So if you've never done it before, it can be a little bit intimidating, um, but I just wanted to take you know a few minutes of your time to show you how easy it really can be and uh, give you the main details. So first of all, let's talk about the goals of math talks. Why do we want to do them in our classroom? Well, there's many amazing reasons, but here's the big ones. First of all, we want our students to understand that math is flexible. This can sometimes be a scary thought even for teachers because we are used to math being a very right or wrong subject. But in reality, there's a lot of room for flexibility in math, particularly with how we think, how we uh, rationalize or strategize. And so number talks or math talks help students understand that. A nice side effect of this is that it really helps students build their math confidence. How many students do you have in your classroom or have you had who, and you've heard them say, uh, you know, I'm not good at math or I'm just not a math person or I'm not fast enough at math. It's actually really sad because kids label themselves, not, not all, but a lot of kids will label themselves very young as being not good at math. And so math talks can help build that confidence because they see that they actually are good at math and they're able to solve things in different ways. They don't have to think in one exact way. There's a lot of room for flexibility. So that's a really important goal that we have for our students as well. Another big goal of Math Talks is to share and reflect on different strategies. So you'll see in a minute that um, the, there's a lot of room for discussion. So we encourage students to share how they're solving something, and then we encourage other students to reflect on that strategy. This helps students learn new strategies and um, just be more reflective of what works best for them. And then our last big goal is to build conceptual understanding and number sense. So the way that these math talks are laid out, you'll notice that they're very visual. This is helping your students build that conceptual understanding that is so important. They can actually see the math that they're doing. It's not just a, an abstract idea in their heads. Okay, so how do we best use the slides that I've given you in this free uh, Halloween number talk file. So first of all, uh, here's an example of one of the slides. What we want to do is basically just show the slide and then discuss. So on this one, you can see that it's a very open-ended question. Um, there's no right answer for this one. This is simply asking your students for their ideas and then they share their ideas. The one thing is that they have to be able to justify their answers. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So you're going to show them the slide. And then something that a lot of teachers like to do with number talks, rather than having your students raise their hands, because that can be very distracting to everyone else, often uh, we will have students put a thumb to their chest when they have a strategy. So this, first of all, it's much less distracting for the students who are going to take a little bit longer to think. And it's not quite so intimidating because some of your students need more time, right? They need more time. So if there's hands shooting up all around them, that can be a little bit stressful because first of all, they think that they're being slow. Uh, they're holding everybody up. Uh, it's, just, it's just distracting for some. So that's what we want kids to do is just put a thumb up to their chest. But then once they have found one answer or one strategy or whatever you're looking for, they don't stop thinking they keep looking for other strategies or answers. And then for every additional one that they think of, they're going to put another finger to their chest. So that will keep all your students engaged. Some kids might have time to think of three different answers or strategies, and some might just have time to think of one, and that's okay. So this is a really great way to um, have your kids show that they're thinking. Um, if you are interested, I have a really detailed blog post about the entire number talk implementation. The link is there at the bottom. Um, I'm going to include it in the description here as well if you're interested in reading more about this. Um, but this is just an easy way for you to get started that you can take back to your classroom. Okay, next aspect is the sharing and discussing. That is extremely powerful because students are not only being... 
um, you know, working with their own strategy or their own ideas, but they are listening to and hopefully reflecting on other people's strategies as well. So just think for this slide, all of the different um, answers that we could be thinking of. So while one student might think that the pumpkin represents 112, um, you know, maybe they're thinking about counting by ones, another one could use decimals or fractions. Maybe that pumpkin represents 111 because every every point on the number line is 0.5 or, or one half. Um, there's many ways to think about this. Maybe we're counting by 100, so the pumpkin represents 310, right? There's so many different ways. Okay, so what are you looking for when your students are talking about the slides? First of all, you're looking for student participation. A lot of teachers report that um, th these types of math talks get even their reluctant sharers. Um, they, they even get those students participating because it's pretty low risk. Um, if you think about the slide that I'm showing here that we just discussed, there's not just one right answer. There is so much opportunity for students to answer correctly um, because there's many correct answers. So that really um, hopefully will encourage some of your more reluctant students to share. You're also looking for students to have the ability to respectfully reflect on another student's thinking. So in the file, I've included a sheet of possible sentence starters, um, and you can encourage kids to use these. So, you know, I, I agree with so-and-so because, or I disagree with so-and-so because, and that's a really important part of number talks as well, is just respectfully reflecting. And um, and that's something that your students will get better at with practice. It sometimes takes a little while to, to start doing that. Another thing that you're looking for is justification of answers. So an answer is not simply enough for most of the slides. Your students need to justify it. So if they think that this pumpkin represents 310, well, why? Why does it represent 310? Okay, so they have to justify their answers. Okay, so let's just take a really quick look at a few of the slides. I thought I would help you out um, with some ways of thinking about these slides so that you feel a little bit prepared before you do them in your classroom. So uh, on the candy slide, we are looking at the candies and looking at how we're seeing them. So there's lots of ways to see these candies. We might see them in groups of three, right? We have four groups of three over here and four over here, so we can see them in eight rows of three. Or maybe we see them in four rows of six, if we just go straight across. Maybe we're grouping the green ones and the blue ones together, so we see a group of 12 at the top and a group of 12 at the bottom. Maybe we're grouping them in larger squares, so we see uh, 12 here, and 12 over here. Tons of different ways to see these. Maybe we see them in, in color groups, but separated. So here's a group of six, another group of six, another group of six, another group of six. So this slide alone, there is so much room for discussion. And then we're going to extend it to look at some multiplication or addition facts that are modeled in the picture. So that's a great one for discussion. Um, okay, this one here, you, this is a two slide number talk. So we start out with saying that there's an equal amount of, or an equal number of witch hats in each box. How many witch hats could there be? Again, you'll see that this just has a ton of room for, for correct answers. Maybe there's one witch hat under each box. So there's eight in total. Maybe there's 10 hats in each box. So that would make 80 in total. And then on your second slide, you'll, I didn't include it in this presentation, but then you'll show the actual number and then you'll reflect on that. Okay, on this graphing question, again, there's no right answer. So what could this graph be showing? This is the only information that the kids have, but again, there's some really important information shown here. So obviously the other category is higher than all the others. What could the title of this graph be? Uh, what could the scale be? There's all kinds of room for discussion here. On the spider legs slide, um, I've included these in a 10 frame because we want to be, if your kids aren't doing multiplication yet, we can start moving toward that multiplicative reasoning. And this is really just, um, you know, maybe they're going to add 
Maybe they're going to add eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Maybe you're already into multiplication and they can think five groups of eight or five times eight. Maybe we could think about, you know, if the 10 frame were full of spiders, we'd have 10 groups of eight and we can see half of that. So again, just listen to your students here and see what they come up with. The big idea for math talks is that you don't have to be super prepared with a bunch of answers because most teachers are shocked with what their students come up with. And that's really where you learn a lot as well is just by doing it in your classroom and listening to your students. Okay, for this one with the symbols here, we're just building 100 or um, I guess I didn't mention, but you've probably figured out already that I have provided differentiated slides for some of these. So you can choose the one that best suits your classroom. So there's one of these um, where you're making 100 and then another one where you're making 1000. And here we're just sharing. So you could add two witches to make 100. Um, you could encourage kids to have as many, uh, you know, add more than just two numbers together. So just a fun way to work on some addition. Okay, this one with the blue boxes, these, these are numberless word problems. If you have not used numberless word problems in your classroom, they can be super effective because your students actually have to think about the situation that is happening in the problem. So let me know if you've noticed this before. You give your kids a sheet of addition word problems. They know that the word problems all use addition, so they pick those numbers out of the problem and add them to get a correct answer without even understanding what the problem is talking about, right? That's super common and kids figure that out. So numberless word problems really get the kids to think about the problem deeply and really think about what is happening in the problem. So on this one, there are some blue boxes. When you click the slide, the blue box will disappear and you'll discuss the next part. So let's just go over this one quickly. So the first part of this one, Noah went trick-or-treating, he got some chocolate bars and the rest were hard candies. So then you have a discussion with your classroom. Well, what do you know? Well, I know that Noah was trick-or-treating, I know he got some chocolate bars and I know he got some hard candies. Right now, what are you wondering? And again, this is this, there's lots of room for different answers here. So, well, I'm wondering how many chocolate bars he got, or I'm wondering how long he went trick-or-treating for, or how many hard candies he bought, right? So he, or he got, sorry. So there's some room for discussion. Now you're going to click, and then the blue box disappears. Now let's look at the next part. Noah went trick-or-treating and got 100 treats in all. So maybe that answered one of your students' questions on what they were wondering. Okay, he got some chocolate bars and the rest were hard candies. So now what new information do we have? Well, now we know that he got 100 treats. That's new information that we didn't have before. What are we wondering? Again, this is open to student discussion. So personally, I'm wondering how many chocolate bars he got, how many hard candies he got. Your students might have some different thoughts. Now we uncover the final box and it says Noah went trick-or-treating and got 100 treats in all. He got 23 chocolate bars and the rest were hard candies. So here, what new information do we know? Well, we know that he got 23 chocolate bars, but we also know something else. We can also figure out how many hard candies he got. And so as you can see, numberless word problems can be really powerful for deep discussion and thinking when it comes to word problems. So I've included one of those in there for you as well. Um, again, there are a couple different versions so that you can use the one that best suits your classroom. Uh, here's another example of one that has no correct answer. Uh, what could we discuss with this slide? Well, first of all, we could discuss that the left side is going to be less than the right side, right? Because we can see that from the balance scale. And there's a lot of different options for which numbers could go into the cauldrons. Okay, one final tip that I have before I shut this down is just try it even if you don't feel ready. So number talks, math talks, whatever you wanna call them, they can feel really intimidating because we feel like we have to be extra prepared for all of the different answers that kids might say. You don't have to be super prepared for all of the answers that your kids might say. You can literally do zero preparation with these and just put up a slide and listen to your students and listen to what they come up with and that will be just as effective as if you take 
an hour and prepare for it. Um, you need to listen to some of the things that your, your students are going to come up with, and that is going to help you predict how they might answer other slides or talk about other slides. But the beauty of Math Talks is that there's really no preparation needed. If you want to go through the slides and brainstorm a few things that you might think of or ways that you might solve things, totally fine. But I don't want, to, want you to feel like you need to do that. You can literally put a slide up and discuss it with, with your class and have just an amazing discussion that your students are, are going to love because this does not always happen in a lot of math classes, discussions like this that are so open-ended. So it's going to feel really enjoyable for your students. So just try it even before you feel ready for it. And I promise, um, I think you'll have great results. Okay, lastly, if you want to continue the conversations and keep building number sense in your classroom and flexible thinking all year long, I do have complete sets of math conversations, they're called, um, with very similar prompts to what you'll see in the Halloween package. But each package, each grade level package has 200 slides, so enough to last you all year long and really just transform your, your um, number sense routine in your classroom. So that is it. I'm going to include some helpful links back to my website where you can find more information if you're interested. If not, this video gave you all the info that you need to get started with it in your classroom. So I wish you good luck. I hope your students love them and I hope you see lots of wonderful conversation happening in your math class. I'll talk to you later.